Today, I'll share what I learned photographing the Comet Neowise Tuesday night, location information, exposure information, and I'll also showcase the winners from this week's Office Hours photo contest. Well, hey everybody, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. I wanna thank everybody who's been watching, liking, subscribing, sharing these videos. It makes a huge difference. There's always a subscribe button down there in the bottom right if you haven't hit it yet. For anybody watching, there's always a linked table of contents where you can just click on the part of this video that you wanna watch or rewatch. So if you just click show more or click the video title, depending on your platform, you can really easily locate that. And there's just a clickable bunch of links there. Anything I talk about is always linked in there as well. So today I'm gonna to go over uh, some things I learned Tuesday night, actually last night as I'm filming this, uh, photographing the comet Neowise. That thing's gonna be around till July 22nd, getting closer and closer to Earth. Uh, it's perfect to photograph in the Northern Hemisphere at sunset, particularly in the higher latitudes. So I'm gonna showcase what I learned here in the Northwest, photographing it last night, a little tips on locating it, as well as what exposures I used and when I kinda of thought the timing was best for it. And I'm also gonna showcase some of the winners from this week's Office Hours photo contest that we announced on Tuesday amazing group of submissions. We had well over 100 submissions and I was blown away by the quality. I'm really honored to have such a great group of photographers participating uh, in these office hours and in this photo contest. So I wanna showcase that gallery and invite everyone to go check it out because there's just some great, great work in there. All right, so let's jump in, talk about the comet Neowise. Um, I'm gonna show you the earlier image that I got. I took about, I don't know, 25 frames. This is one of my favorite places. I kiteboard off this island, Savi Island. I go to the other side of it. This is just north of Portland, Oregon. Uh, we're looking north out of the city, so there's not as much light uh, along the Willamette Channel, which, which, forms, which goes around the island to the left, close into Portland. The other side of the island has the Columbia River, and, and the other side of it is Washington. We kite sort of off the northeastern shore of this. But this is from the bridge that we take from Portland to get onto the island. And I was out scouting on the island and I saw some interesting, you know, hay fields and oak trees and things that I thought about putting the comet with. But then as I was driving off from scouting, I noticed, you know, there's a sidewalk leading over the bridge and the angle of view up the river was north by northwest with these pylons. And I thought, hmm. You know, so, uh, so I went out there last night, and this is about, I would say, the, the, the clock's wrong on my, uh, on my camera. Sunset was at about nine o'clock, and I think this was at about 10.29, so about an hour, hour and 20 minutes to an hour and a half after sunset, actually. Um, I'd say an hour and 20 minutes after sunset. That's when it really started to become visible. You, once you saw it, uh, you could see it with your naked eye. The thing of it was, having a good set of binoculars really helped. If you start scanning the sky north by northwest, and the place to look, at least here in Oregon, the place to look was right, if you had the Big Dipper in the sky, you find locate that Big Dipper as the stars become visible, it's right down here, just below and to the right of the Big Dipper. Big Dipper should be low in the sky, uh, you know, pointing to Polaris, the North Star up here. It's just, it's mostly north with a little northwest in it. It's just a little off of north and it's down below the Big Dipper. And, and last night at least, as, as I held out my, uh, my hand and had a look at that, it was, it was about fist height above the horizon. So if I held my fist out at arm's length, it was about fist height above the horizon, maybe just a little bit more. Um, it's probably gonna be a little higher each successive night, but that's the spot to look. And so this is the early photo. I went out with my 105 millimeter 1.4 and I found the view was a little too narrow to get the river and the pylons in. So I put my camera horizontal and, and captured a series of vertical images to do, I mean, to, uh, captured a series of horizontal images moving vertically as a panorama. So this is a six shot panorama. And even though I'm using the Nikon Z6, I got about 50 megapixels out of it if you multiply uh, the, the pixel density on this guy. Uh, but the shot I like better was I switched to an 85 millimeter to have a little bit wider view. 
and I waited until a good two hours after sunset, so late at night. This is probably, this is about 11 o'clock at night, um, and that way that glow from the sunset has dropped, the stars are still out, uh, and in this case, it saw the island, there's kind of enough ambient light to have some, some nice light, even though there's no moon. That's another benefit to us right now. The moon is not rising till early in the morning. So it's a moonless night, not going to wash that sky out. So this is not very far from, from a pretty big urban center, you know, 10 miles north of Portland. Uh, and it really stands out. Um, once you, it, the later it gets, the more you can see it with your naked eye, but bringing a good set of binoculars with you is going to be a huge benefit because you'll just enjoy looking at it through those. Um, so I, I really enjoyed looking at it through the binoculars. So this is an 85 millimeter shot. Now earlier in the evening when I shot with the 105, each of those pano shots was shot at f2, four seconds at ISO 640. I held it to four seconds to make sure that I wouldn't have, I wanted the stars to be pinpoint. I didn't want them to start trailing with the long lens, with the 105 millimeter lens. I wanted a shorter exposure. Um, and, and because it's pretty bright, ISO 640 was just fine at f2. So then moving on to later at night, I kept my exposure time down. On the 85, I found about eight seconds was fine. I got nice, good stars at eight seconds. Um, I probably, I would err on even less maybe. And I'd bump my ISO up to 1250 and bump my aperture up to f2.5 because that 85 millimeter lens performs better stop down a little bit. And I really like this angle of view and I like this amount of light. The, the comet stands out and it gets the stars around it. So, you know, I would recommend you get out there within an hour of sunset. It's better to get there earlier. Make sure you get infinity focused and locked down with your camera and a composition pointed towards the north by northwest that you like. And then, you know, as the Big Dipper comes out, look for that comet, use the binoculars, scan the horizon. Once you've seen it with your binoculars, you're not gonna be able to miss it. It's bold and beautiful. Uh, and then start shooting with your camera and you'll, you'll see that thing come blooming out, just like how the Milky Way is enhanced with the longer exposure up it comes. And so there's my exposure data for later in the evening. 2.5 uh, aperture, 8 seconds, 1250 ISO. I might consider dropping your, your time down if you're using an 85 millimeter. I think there's a tiny bit of a trail to these stars, but, but it's good enough. All right. So with that said, I hope people can get out there. I really hope you can get out there and photograph this uh, before this comet's gone. It's super, super cool. And there was there were a group of people who were all socially distanced out on the bridge. I had a couple of my kiteboarding friends with me, and everybody was just ooing and aahing. A lot of people had, had binoculars. I didn't see any other photographers, but it's a really, really cool sight. So I'm going to go back out tonight, actually, and see there's one other spot I want to check out. There may be too much city light for it, but I want to give it a shot and see if it works. Um, it's my last real chance to do it, just given some family commitments that I have through the rest of the week and also looking at the weather. This might be it for me. So anyhow, I hope everybody takes advantage of it. Let's talk about some of the just crazy submissions that, that I had uh, to my uh, photo contest that, that, that we did on Tuesday. We actually announced winners. We had this open for a couple of weeks for the Office Hours crew. For those of you that haven't joined me for my free Office Hours on Tuesday mornings, we're doing another one this Tuesday talking about scouting and finding a location to photograph the full moon uh, that's going to be out uh, on the 1st of August. Uh, and, and then I want to get, we're going to take a break for a week and we'll have another set of office hours where we go over some images people captured of that full moon. So I'm going to talk about ways to scout and plan a shoot of the full moon at, at sunset and sunrise. So something to look forward to. But we ran these, this photo contest. The winners get a big, beautiful print of their image along with a special Hudson Henry photography hat to prove that they've won the contest. And, and our winners were uh, Mark Lentz for this just incredible, uh, incredible composite textured image of this night heron. It's quite, quite beautiful. This isn't the kind of work that I do a lot, but I can find no fault. And I just wonder how many hours this work took. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful image to begin with, too. Uh, Roy Cruz for this spectacular antelope camion image. The light's perfect, and it's the composition, that abstract of the rock. I've seen so many images, taken so many images in here, but I haven't seen one that just lines it up in such a really lovely way. I love it. 
Uh, and then finally, Eric Pond's Foliage, which, God, just spectacular black and white abstract image with these plants and this form. Um, and so Rick LePage and I just, just loved it. But I want you to come through and look at some of these honorable mentions uh, from, 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 well, actually all the images. You can see this gallery. There's a bunch of honorable mentions here that were just spectacular. Uh, and then the images, it just was hard. It was hard to delineate who should win this contest. And I, I'm going to put a link to this gallery. You can see it's hudsonary.com slash contest gallery. But I'll put a link in the YouTube description. And I would really invite everyone uh, to go and check out these images and view them large. I mean, there's just so much intense quality and beautiful craftsmanship in this entire gallery that, I mean, it was, it was just painful to have to go through and choose uh, three to be winners. So for all of you who are part of the community and joined those office hours and submitted, I can't thank you enough. And for those who, who didn't win, uh, you still submitted fantastic, fantastic photos. So we're looking forward to to doing this again in the not so distant future. We're looking forward to the office hours on uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, talking about the full moon that's coming in August, here August 1st, 2020, uh, and how to photograph that and how to plan it. And then we're looking forward to getting together after that full moon and, and looking at images of it. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. This whole thing is about your input. It's the things that you want to know about. You know, my, my interest in photographing the comet actually came from an email from an approaching the scene watcher who asked, hey, can you do an episode on photographing the comet? And I started researching it and I thought, oh, that's something I want to do too. So it's it, the things that you are all interested in photographically are what drive the content of this channel. And so logging in and, and making comments on the YouTube channel, sending me emails, joining the office hours and submitting questions, that's what drives this content. This community is awesome. And I thank you all so much. We'll see you next week.